This lesson is about the Hello World program. This is the traditional program that's probably the simplest program you can write and have it actually do something. It doesn't do much, it just displays one line of text, but it is a complete program. As things progress through this course, every example that I show you will have this fundamental form as its basis. Now I use a text editor and the command line compiler. You can use any one of the IDEs just as long as you can write programs, compile them, and run them, you'll be all right. I actually have two reasons for using the command line compiler. First, it keeps the screen simple and clear, and I can show you the code without everything being cluttered up with some IDE. I mean, if I were to use an IDE, it probably wouldn't be the same one you're using, so it would just be a distraction. The second reason I use the command line is because I like it. It's the way I program. Now, I use an editor named VI, so let me use it to show you the source of the Hello World program. Now, let's stop right here. Notice that the name of the file has the suffix .java. All Java source code files end with .java. You see, there's a trick that the compiler can do for you, but you must use this naming convention so it can do it. More about all of this later. Also, notice that the name is both in upper and lower case, and that's important. In the Java alphabet, there are 52 letters, 26 little ones and 26 big ones. If the case doesn't match, Java considers it a different word. More on this later, too. Now, here's the code. This first line declares a class named Hello World. Notice that it is spelled exactly the same as the name of the file, including upper and lower case. This class is declared as public, which means it is accessible by name from any place. This second line declares a main method. Every class file that can be executed from the command line has a main method declared just like this one. It is public so it can be addressed from outside. It is static, so it will exist without an object being created from the class first. That is, this method resides in the class, not in each object constructed from the class. It's declared as void because it has no return value. It's past one argument. The argument is an array of string objects that contain whatever is included on the command line when the program was started. Remember, when you start a program from inside a window by clicking on a button or something, all that does is issue a command line to start the program, so the form is the same inside the program. Now, the main method just contains this one line of code. The call to print line outputs the text. The print line method is a member of the out class, and the out class is a static member of the system class. You can use whatever the interface is that you've adopted to compile and run the program. From the command line, I first saved the file and got out of the editor. Next, I use the Java compiler to compile the program into a class file. From the command line, the name of the compiler is JAVAC, and you supply it with the full name of the source file like this. If you don't get any error messages, that means it compiled and you now have a class file. Now you can see here that you now have a new file with the same base name, but it has a suffix of .class. This file contains the same information as the original source file, but now it has been translated into a form that can be executed and you execute it by running the Java virtual machine and naming the class that you want to run. This time you name the class without the file suffix. Now that's how every Java program is written, compiled, and run. If you use an IDE, the process may seem a little different, but the things that happen are exactly the same. First, you use the built-in text editor to write the source code and save it in a file of the proper name. Next, you use the built-in compiler to create the class file. And finally, you use the Java virtual machine to load and execute the class file. 
Now, later we'll be dealing with programs that are made up of several class files, but they all compile and run in exactly the same way. They all start running with a class that has a main method in it, and then the other classes get loaded and are worked on from there.